Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So for today's valued viewer request question, we've got this one RC wants to do from Zeb. Hello Zeb. Request, hey Cap, can you test the SPJ on the JF-17 Thunder against AI SAMs? It would be good to know how close we can get to SAMs before it burns through the SPJ. And we are at the Grim Reaper's bang on setup to do this. It wouldn't be good enough to just fly towards a SAM, put your SPJ on and see when it shot back at us. We need more information and we've got a really good way of doing that. We've done a what we call an empirical or as close as we can get to empirical test. That means we can do it so that we can compare the results exactly against the other planes. So what we're going to do is look at the old video that we did. If I can find it, there it is. Look at this. Max effectiveness of air-to-ground jammers. Note that we've already done, also done, max effectiveness of air-to-air -air jammers in DCS World. This is the air-to-ground because that's what the guy wanted. It is a full test where we have all the different SAMs in the game, or five or six SAMs, a bunch over here as well, set up against these different planes. And they're all jamming. And we can test because everything's set up, every test is set up exactly the same. We can test exactly what happens and how good the jammers are. Here is the end result, if I can find it, with my old spreadsheet. It shows each participant, the control is an F-15C without a jammer, using the jammer. And what happened against each of these different types of SAMs and at what ranges, recorded burn through times and the percentage that you will get hit. The way it works with ECMs in DCS World is, and a lot of things in DCS World, is it rolls a dice. It's a game at the end of the day. It only simulates things to a certain degree of accuracy. At some point, it just introduces a randomizer. It rolls a dice on certain parameters. And that's how you get your result, whether the missile is going to hit or it's going to go wide. And we've got the uh, uh, percentage chances here roughly to the nearest 10% or something like that against the different SAMs. All right, so here's our test. All the planes are deactivated. The Jeffs have replaced the A-10Cs and exactly the same parameters. Note that AI flyers are being used this time because that can make things perfectly empirical but note a lot of you are probably saying oh we don't want you to test the ai we want you to test the human jammer because the human is different to the ai jammer incorrect i've done thorough testing as you can see on the previous videos which i will link in the video description if you can be bothered to go and look and i've proved that they have exactly the same effectiveness as the one operated by the human version of the plane so test one go out of interest if you want me to prove that they are jamming which is always a worthwhile thing doing i'm going to jump in this f15 here and pause put the scope on if i can boom boom i should see a jammer strobe from the only plane active or the only two planes active stand by as it populates where is the little blighter and there it is you can see we've got a jammer strobe there mm -hmm. okay let's get out of there continue back to spectators Allow it to run through and let them get shot down. Okay, valued viewers, the results are in. If this looks boring, that's because it is very boring, I'm afraid. So let's go and study the first attacks. So let's take, let's try and find our guy here. We'll do SA6 first of all. Jeff, SA6, first hit was fired at slant range of 15.88 miles. Let's plug it in. 8 of 15.88 miles, 15.88. And was it a hit? Obviously, we can only measure the first missile for hit and miss and burn out and burn through. It was a hit? Or was it? Hard to tell, actually. You know what? That's as clear as goddamn mud. I think that's a hit. Just not very well displayed. Obviously, I've set him to immortal. See if the next one does the same. No, that didn't. Does the missile disappear? Mm, it, well, it looks like a miss, actually. It looks like a miss. Compared to what we've got there. So. And that is normal for a missile to miss against a modern jammer, an SE6. So uh, it is a miss. That's SA6 version 1. What have we got next? Let's check the SA11. Burn through of. These are all separate units. They're not interlinked, by the way. They do not influence each other. That's also been tested in one of the early videos. Yeah, that is a burn through. SA11 of. Uh, 4. 14.18 miles, 14.18 miles. Let's go and check it up here. SA11, 14.18 miles. It's falling into a line with all the other track, uh, jammers, which is exactly what we thought, would have thought would have happened. And is it hit or a miss? It's a miss. Uh, next is the S. Oh, sorry, wrong missile. It's a hit. It's a hit. SA11 test one hit. Next is the first. S300, S300, which is firing there, which has got 31.22 miles, which 
does not make any sense at all. Yes, it does, sorry. Uh, which is 31.22 miles. Jammer is shit. 31.2. It's as bad as the non jammer aircraft, but we know it's jamming. We tested it earlier on. So don't say, oh crap, it's not jamming. 31.22 miles. 31.22 miles. It's not effective against an S300 PS for some reason. Uh, 31.22. Oh, yes, it is. Sorry, I was looking in the wrong column. It's my bad. And is it hit? Uh, where is the missile? Follow it. Track it, track it, track it, track it, track it. It's a miss. It's a miss. So that is a miss in the PS. Right, all I've got to do is the naval foxtrot. So we've got a Ranga of 25, burn through 25.31, which is in line with the others. 25.31. And have we got hit? It's only the first. Remember, naval grumbles fire in pairs. Mustn't forget that if you're ever facing one. It's a little bit cheeky. And it's a miss. First one's all I'm interested in. So miss, miss. So it was miss, hit, miss, miss. We've got to do this. Uh, five more times. So off we go. Test two. Sweet, I loaded up test one again. Test two. Now we'll do the naval grumble first. All we need to know is hit or miss first missile. And first missile is hit. First missile hit. So report that. First missile, naval grumble seemed to was hit. Check our little douchebag over at Bullseye. SA6. Miss. SA11. In fact, let's just report that. SA6 miss. Yep, SA11. Where's SA11? There it is. Hit. Uh, and SA-10 PS there miss okay next round round three off you can start to get a feel for how the randomizer works now can't you actually decides when the missile's fired I think actually I don't, understand, I don't really know oh wow a rare SA-6 hit there um, SA-6 hit uh, SA-11 hit SA-300 PS hit wow we're going for four rounds sorry about that SA-10 PS just a rumble Never rumble. Let's go now. Ready now. All the dice. One, two, three, four. Okay, next. Four. Hit. Miss. Uh, say, don't. Hit. Say, don't guess. Rumble. Hit. And set. And rumble. What's that? Hit. This is probably a battle. Rumble. Hit. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Hit. 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 And rumble. Let's do it. Hit. Now. Rumble. That's the way it goes. It's going to analyse that cheeky bit of data. And we have the final data in. JF-17. So, for an SA-6, it has a burn-through range of 15.88 miles, which is consistent with the best best of the jammers which is the u22-a uh, whereas the worst is obviously the control and the medium is the avab uh, the internal jammers basically no that's an external jammer uh, and it has an 80 percent chance to dodge a sa6 at burn through sa11 it has equal to the best burn through ranges equal to the a10c uh, jam in there they're pretty much all the same actually within a few hundred feet a burn through of 14.18 and it has a 0% chance as well as with the others do of jamming an SA-11 that's because an SA-11 can't be jammed in DTS at burn through ranges I don't know why uh, when I said jammed uh, sorry I said that wrong what I meant to say is it can be jammed but once it's at burn through it has zero chance of dodging that's what I'm trying to say uh, naval grumble We've got a burn-through range, uh, basically the same as everything else. It's such a small distance there that I probably just mismeasured that slightly. It's basically 25, same as the other guys there, uh, I imagine. Miss chance is pretty low. So out of burn-through, the miss chance is 20%, which is uh, pretty low. Remember how this works. The way it works in DTS is the jammer, once it's burnt through, so outside of burn-through, it jams completely. You can't fire on it. Within jammer, within jammer, it, has, it rolls a dice, and that dice is affected by parameters, including the distance your range basically an sa10 300 ps it has a burn through range this is a little bit better than the naval grumbles uh, for jammers for anti-jamming remember it's got the same with control but for anti-jamming it can burn through a lot further it's got the worst of all the jammers here at 31 in fact it's nearly as bad as control and it's got a miss chance at that range with that jammer of 40%. So that's as empirical as I can get. Yes, I can make a sexy little video and go charging at a SAM and say, oh, this looks cool, but it doesn't actually tell you anything empirical. This tells you what the burn through ranges are at a certain altitude and speed with the certain types of enemy SAMs that you're likely to be facing and the chance if they fire at that distance that you're going to get hit. There's not much better I can do than that. I hope that was useful and see you later.